On today's show, what lessons can the Dallas Mavericks learn from the 2023 NBA champion Denver Nuggets? And we'll profile Kaysen Wallace. Can he be the perfect guard the Mavs need in the draft? We'll talk about that and more on today's Lot of Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Now come 10 Mavericks, NBA champion. He is a champion. It's good, and the Mavericks have won the game. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. Welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show, making Locked On Mavs your first listen every day. Join the Raccoon Squad, be an everydayer, subscribe or follow for free. Just search Locked On Mavericks wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. The best way you can help us grow this show is to listen every day and to comment anything below. Let us know in the comment section. Scale of zero to five. Five being the happiest, zero being you hate it. How happy would you be if the Mavericks chose Kaysen Wallace at number 10 in the NBA draft? Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Lockdown NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guarantee. If you want to support the show, text us, get text alerts from us on Mavs rumors, things that we're hearing, and more. Subscribe to our subtext and uh, help support the show. Click the link in the description below. And joining me, as always, my co host, writer, and contributor at Mavs.com. The Nugget Nerd, the one more thinking. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? A big congratulations to the Denver Nuggets. What a satisfying, what a satisfying title. Well, one shout out to Locked On Nuggets. Uh, those guys, I mean, Matt, they're part of Matt Moore and Adam Mora is having a great having a great night. Is the DNVR bar shutting oh down God. tonight at all? <laughs> Will they run out of alcohol? That's the question. <laughs> No, I just really respect what those guys do and uh, love the the venture that they're doing with DMVR up in Denver. It's, cool. it's just always cool to see a, a, a franchise, I think, honestly, in, in, in any sport, uh, win a title for the first time. And especially for a guy, there's so many storylines with Denver, but especially for a guy like Nikola Jokic that has, you know, all these ridiculous stat lines and accolades and everything. But for this weird reason, there's been like just just weird discourse around him over the past, you know, I don't know, handful of years, few years. Yeah. And for him to hit this mountaintop in the fashion in which he did, I mean, this is like an all time finals, you know, playoff run uh, that he was on. It just eliminates every, you know, anything. It was he was already the litmus test of like, hey, do you know ball? Do you like watch ball? Like, and I hate when people drop that like line. Um, but there's no argument anymore. You have no argument against him if, if you weren't a Jokic guy. He is, uh, he's there. Another thing that I saw Caitlin Cooper say, she's a great uh, writer and she does some podcasts for us for Lockdown Pacers and covers the Pacers. Uh, she said that this, this title and, and Jokic specifically like broke a bunch of rules people had, like unwritten rules people had for this is how you have to win a title. So you have to have this. You have to have a, a center that's like dominant defensively. Like you have to have all these things. You just have to build around what you have. And just mm-hmm. maximize if you have like exceptional talent in a pl- in some place, like in whatever position, you can build a championship contender around them, right? Like we hadn't really seen a Jokic type win a title. Like when's I mean, what's the last one? It's like Hakeem, <laughs> but there, it's Hakeem, there, Hakeem there was like no Jokic. incredible. Yeah. Like there hasn't been another Jokic type like that. Uh, and not to say Jokic is like a terrible defensive player, but wasn't a Hakeem, a Duncan, a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Like he just wasn't one of those guys. And so to see a player like that with the passing and just the incredible skills that he has you look at the Dallas Mavericks and you say okay well can they win with Luka and Kyrie Irving as their two guys and I think the answer is yes like you, you can build around those type of guys you and any type of guys as long as you have two incredible talents and you put the right pieces around them I think that they can go and win a title do I think they're going to do it next year probably not <laughs> but if you compare these two teams I was thought we were talking about this yesterday if you compare the two teams and you look at all right you have Luka and Kyrie Jokic and Jamal Murray, that, that's pretty comparable th- talent-wise for those. Uh, eh, what? Come at me. Come at me. Eh, what? I, I just, I think the level that Jokic is at right now on, in, in a couple I, different levels is different than He's Jokic, better than, than Luka, Luka. But isn't Kyrie yeah. better than Jamal Murray? Um, I mean, after this, after what he's done in this playoffs and stuff. I mean, you can think, say that those are a wash. I just think it's hard to do the comp with with Jokic and Luka because I think 
some of the stuff like they, I, I, they have two different styles of offenses kind of in, in a way. And I don't know. It's just, I'm just saying, I think there's only a couple of players. There's only a couple of players on that level in the NBA. Like if you're saying that Luca's not near Jokic's level, then no one is right. Like then, then there's like, he's on a level on his own, which he probably is. Right. But I like, think if you want to do like the, Hey, two and two, and then look at the supporting cast. I think that's the biggest thing of like, that's what I'm saying. You got, you got these, yeah. you got these two stars. Right. And I think that they're on similar talent levels right like maybe not the exact same i think Jokic is better than luca i think Kyrie is probably a little bit better than jamal murray and then you look at the talent around him you're like okay reggie bullock he could be like a kcp he could do what kcp did in this finals you look at like you look down down the road at, like down the line at some of these players you're like all right the mavericks have some can can Jaden hardy do what christian brown just did like i think so like come in and do some stuff and like can Josh Green be the Bruce Brown role? Come off the bench and like all of a sudden he's making passes. He's hitting some threes. He has one game where he scores like 15 points. You're like, where'd that come from? You can see that. Jeff Green, he was like their backup five. He was their their big man. Can Dwight Powell and JaVale McGee do that? Probably. And then you have the Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter Jr. role. And this is the spot the Mavericks do not have in any sense of the word. Because then if you're comparing the two teams, you were with me for, for most of those players, right? And now... It's Aaron Gordon and Maxi Kleba. That does not match up. Five years ago, <laughs> five years ago it may, may have, and then Michael Porter Jr. and Tim Hardaway Jr. Like it's that. That's where it doesn't match up, and that's where the Dallas Mavericks need to improve this offseason is in those spots. And one of them probably has to be a center. I'm not saying both of them need to be wings, like, big wings like them, but they need to improve those talent spots. It's the third and fourth spots on the roster, and they absolutely have to improve those this offseason if they want to contend. Yeah, one one of the yeah one of the aspects of that is you know Jokic can hold his you know ground defensively yeah. against most of the you know the bigger guys in the league. Um, to where you know Luca being at, at a wing position, it you know the difference of them having Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter Jr., KCP, you know th all three of those dudes on the wing, even like a Bruce Brown. Uh, but anyway, let's let's leave Luca and you know Jamal Murray, Kyrie, Jokic yeah. out of it. Let's look at those those the the supporting cast. I think the biggest thing with those is how versatile th those the guys are. Right. The Gordon Porter, KCP, Bruce Brown. I mean, we can throw Christian Brown in there. Look how versatile those guys are compared to what Dallas had this past year. Look at those guys that they, yes, they can hit a three, but they can also dribble. They can also get into the paint. They can drive. They can, they can do something with the ball, not ISO it out. Even though Aaron Gordon showed a little bit here and there, but it's like, they can they can pump fake, dribble into the lane, make a few moves, and like and make it happen. They're not all dependent on Jokic just hand, you know ha handing him a silver platter with the basketball and saying, "Here you go, hit this open shot." That's where Dallas has to graduate their the other role players into. I think Bruce Brown's better than Josh Green, but it's like they they got it. Like KCP can put the ball on the floor drive it on a you know fast break breakaway and all that stuff reggie's got to get better at that they got to find some of the other bigs that like porter and, and gordon what they can do on the yes. wings at their size um that's it's the it's it's no longer just the three and d guy it's the three and d and more you know wing yeah. it's three and d with size but is also ver it's the versatile three and D guy, which really isn't just the three and D guy at that point. You need one of those guys. You look at the past couple of years and you say, okay, who have won the title in the last couple of years? Nuggets. They had Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter jr. You look at the year before you look at the warriors, Aaron, Andrew Wiggins and Draymond green. Like you, you just got to have some of these big wings. You look at when the Lakers won LeBron and, and Kyle Kuzma, like you just have to have some of these big wings at times to throw at anybody across the league at any time and have that versatility like you talked about. And that's one of the things the Mavs have to add this off season. You've been big on, they have to add a wing. Like they, you have to add some kind of wing that mm -hmm. can play probably 30 to 40 minutes in a playoff game. And, and that that's where if I am the, if I'm in the camp of a Cam Whitmore, a Jairus Walker, I don't think Hendricks is there yet, but it's like, I'm, I'm telling everybody there in the top 10, Look what Aaron Gordon just did. <laughs> this is what my guy can do. Cam, Cam Whitmore doesn't have the size as Aaron Gordon does. But like, if I'm Jairus Walker's camp, I'm saying yeah. that's the role that we can he he can play in the league. He can be that versatile wing that can defend multiple positions. So, I think everybody's gonna be looking for their Aaron Gordon, you know, now. But Dallas desperately has to find you know bigger wings that can you know be versatile on the wing. There's a bunch of those wings in this draft too. 
Uh, coming up, we'll talk about one that's not that. We'll talk about Cason Wallace, who is an <laughs> incredible guard defender that I think would be an, is, though. a really good fit for the Mavericks. So coming up, we'll talk about Cason Wallace. But before we do, let me tell you about eBay Motors. The Denver Nuggets won the NBA championship. They had to make sure that every player, like Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter Jr. and others, were the exact right fit. You have to do that same thing for your car. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure that every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage, look for the green check, and know that that part will fit or you get your money back. My garage, uh, just because... Because just like in sports, confidence, baby, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. With over 122 million different parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on eBay Motors. Let's ride. eBay.com, eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions apply. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Mavs, being part of this show and helping us out uh, through the offseason. Subscribe to our subtext and support the show. We appreciate each and every one of you. All right, Isaac, let's do our uh, draft profile on Kaysen Wallace. Oh, I love this guy. I, I was just like every time I was looking at something, I'm like, man, I'm feeling I'm, fe- I'm feeling good about Kaysen Wallace and, and his role at the next level. He is a 6'2", 6'3", maybe. He's like 6'3", with shoes, depending on which shoes he's wearing. 6'3", guard, 195 pounds, 6'8", wingspan, which is positive. He's going to be 19 years old at the time of the draft. He went to Kentucky for one season. He's a game-changing point-of-attack defender who also fills gaps on offense as a playmaker and shooter. He had a back injury his freshman year at Kentucky that kind of kind of limited him, so that's one of the reasons why he's, he's fallen a little bit. But this guy, I mean, just... You look at him and you see, like, okay, some people don't like comps, but Drew Holiday, like, Marcus Smart, like, you can kind of see some of these guys as comps for him as as a, you know, really, really great defender. Rafael Barlow called him the best defender in the class uh, this, you know, this year. And uh, you can just see that he can do some a lot of stuff on offense, but incredible defensive player. Yeah, I think Rafael said on Twitter a while back, he called him like a mini Kawhi. Yeah. And I was like, oh, dang, that's some, that's some high praise. And, um, yeah, like you say, 6'2", six, 6'8", six, wingspan. I mean, David Locke loves this guy, right? So um, <laughs> we did our uh, mock draft and stuff, and, uh, man, David Locke with some with other hosts on the, on the network, and Locke was raving about this guy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Kaysen Wallace was a five-star recruit. He was a 20th-ranked uh, prospect of uh, on ESPN in his class. Local guy, which we know there's a lot of local guys. And the, in he draft. was in the backyard? Um, yes, I don't know if Dallas has looked into him at all. It's from Richardson. So uh, shout out. He was the 2022 Texas Gatorade Player of the Year. He was the Dallas Morning News Player of the Year. I didn't know that was an actual I didn't know player. they had one of those. <laughs> I didn't either. Shout out to Brad and Callie. Um, I don't think they picked him, but. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Uh, one of the things when you uh, read into Casey Wallace, you hear about the type of dude he is. And uh, I went to his like personal bio thing on uh, UK. And here's a couple things about him. If you care about like the personal side of Case Wallace, he graduated with honors. He volunteered as a youth tutor and a basketball coach. His favorite TV show, SpongeBob. Nice. He dunked for the first time in eighth grade, which I thought was kind of interesting because he's only 6'2. So, you know, how tall was he whenever he, he dunked for the first time? SGA is his favorite former uh, Wildcat. And two things here. Chicken and shrimp Alfredo is his favorite food. Have you ever to, eaten that together? Like, I was going to say together or like separately. Because separately, I'm, I'm in. It. I mean, I'd be, I would eat it too. Like I would eat it together for sure. Chicken and shrimp together. Is sure. And yeah, I'm in. Here you go. He plays the saxophone and the piano. Wow. I feel like you love him even more now. Yeah, I'm in. I'm I'm so I'm so in on this guy. Like we we were arguing about him before the pod because I look at him and I say, okay, I know what you're going to be at the next level. I, I look at him and I say, okay, you can be Drew Holiday, you can be Patrick Beverly, you can be Marcus Smart. Like you can be. We've seen guys. You can talk about his size. And say, okay, he's only six two. All those guys I just named. They've they've made like. 20 all defensive teams combined <laughs> like Chris Paul, another shorter guy that's made nine all defensive teams in his career. Rondo made four Bledsoe made two Mike Conley made one. Like you can look at some guys and there's, there's a track record of guys that, that can, that 
you know, can be incredible defenders at his size. And everybody talked about, it. I take a lot of different, um, draft experts. I don't get a chance to, I don't watch every single one of Kingston Wallace's games, but like Rafael Barlow of NBA big board, KOC from the ringer ESPN, the athletic from San Vicini. I take all their stuff and compile it into these draft profiles. Every single one of them said he defends bigger than his position. Like that. He's mm. just a guy that can defend up. And that's something the Mavericks need. Like he can, he is an incredible defender, great hands, uh, defends bigger than himself. And like, that's what the Mavericks need. They need something guaranteed. And then on the offensive end, he shot 59% on pull-up jumpers inside of 17 feet. He's got good range on his three-point shot. He can hit a pull-up shot. He can hit a catch and shoot. Like he was the, you know, the setup guy for, for Kentucky. So he's just got this skill set that I think will work at the NBA level at a really, really, uh, it's really comparable. It's like, it's like one-to-one -one where you can just see where his skills will translate. Uh, Rafael also said that he does a little bit of everything, plays at his own pace. And for me, Kentucky notoriously holds back guards and all kinds of players. And I think Casey Wallace may be the next like Devin Booker, SGA, one of these guys that just gets held back at, at the college level. Oh, you think he's that level? Well, just one of these guys that gets held back at the college level in a certain way and goes to the NBA and you're like, oh, why did this guy go 10? You know, why did this guy go go so much later? Uh, and so for the, all those reasons, I'm, like, I'm really high on him. And I think, yeah, at this point, I, I would take him over over a couple of guys, but we'll we'll continue to talk about Casey Wallace. Yeah, I, I like him a lot. I like him enough to, you know, I, I have a pretty firm top nine in this draft. And then after that, you know, we'll talk about who's going to be there around that that point. But it's just what he gives you. Yeah, every team is looking for the guy who can guard the opposing. Like, so there's so many good point guards in the NBA that having one of those one of those guys, one of those elite like point guard defenders is so key for your team. And then if they can shoot and that that's the thing, it's like, he, yes, he shot 35% from three last year. Yeah. You look at some of his numbers on catch and shoot shots. Um, you know, some of his dribble pull up jumpers. I was talking about Jalen Hood Shafino yesterday coming off these pick, you know, these pick and rolls and stuff. And, you know, his mid range shot case Wallace has great mid range pull up shots. Um, so he can run the pick and roll. Like if, you know, you know, if he's in Dallas and Kyrie or Lucas off the bench or, you know, whatever, or on the bench. Um, I just, yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious on, I I'm pretty confident in what his floor is. I'm curious on like what his ceiling is right. at his size. I wish he was just a little bit taller at six two. I do, I do feel like it limits him a little bit as far as like his ceiling. Well, he measured and, I'm, like and I'm not like all, I'm not all sold on some of his offensive stuff. Well, you come into the NBA, and I don't think he's like a lead guard. Like, I don't think he's he's a Kyrie, a Jamal Murray. Like, I don't think he's that type of guy. Jamal Murray, another Kentucky guy that was held back at his level. De'Aaron um, Fox, Tyrese De Fox. There's a bunch of them. Yeah. I don't think that he comes in and you project him to be, like, the lead guard, the, the go score 25, 30 points a game, or Bradley, whoever. Like, he's not that guy. You need to put him next to, you know, a Luka or somebody. I mean, like, Luka and him it would be an amazing backcourt. But now we have this Kyrie thing that, that – Changes it, I guess, a little bit. Uh, he also measured six two and a half without shoes, so he's he's six mm. three, like he's easily six three. So yeah, does that that give you a little bit? Like you just wanted him to be a little bit taller, and he is. Like <laughs> Here's my thing: I, I like him. I like. Him. I'm not. He's. It's not a guy that you know. There's a couple of you. Know, you look at like a Nick Smith or even like yeah. a Keontae George that is there around that range. Like I like Casey Wallace over those guys. I would take Casey Wallace over Derek Lively at ten. So like, I like him, and I, I I do like him a lot. I think he'd fit in Dallas. I just I, I think he's in a in a a little bit lower tier than some of these other guys for me. Well, I think everybody has him. It seems like he's the he's the consensus. Like, there's that top tier, and then there's like Case and Walls right under there. It's like the obviously you have the the top three that everybody's talked about. You have the Thompson twins. You have like Jarris Walker, Cam Whitmore, Taylor Hendricks. Anthony Black and then like Case and Wallace. Like that that seems to be the tiers that everybody is is putting people in right now. And he's in he's in that last the last one I just mentioned. Coming up, let's talk about a couple weaknesses and then let's get into his availability, comps, who we think he could be, and then why the map should take him, why they shouldn't take him. We'll talk about that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about FanDuel. FanDuel has you covered with everything you need for the offseason and beyond. Right now, fanduel.com slash locked on. You can check that out, see what's available for you. And the no sweat first bet. They have the NBA finals numbers for next year. You ready? The odds uh -oh. for next the odds for next season. Right. Denver Nuggets, number one, plus four sixty. 
Feeling good about that? Bucks tied with them plus 460. Out in the first round, and they're going to make the finals next year. Bounce back. Yeah, Celtics plus 500. Suns plus 700. Ooh. Warriors, Sixers plus 1,200. The Mavericks at plus 2,700. The Mavericks are behind the Heat, the Clippers, the Lakers, the Cavs. 76ers, Warriors, Suns, Celtics, Bucks, Nuggets. You feel good about all those? Uh, at this moment, it's, I mean, it's so hard. I mean, I think there's going to be some massive things that happen over the obviously. Oh yeah. That's good. It's going to change a lot, but that's what it is right now. If you feel good about any of those, you want to take advantage of some of the odds. You're like, okay, well Mavs at plus 2,700. If they can make a couple moves, they can be right back in it. And you put down a hundred bucks. They win the title. You win $2,700. That's, that's a pretty, those are pretty good odds. Go check it out. FanDuel.com slash locked on. All right, Isaac, we're talking about Payson Walls doing our draft profile on him. We talked about his strengths, what he's really good at, a couple of weaknesses. He's not an elite athlete. He lacks some burst and speed. Um, so, and you're not asking him to be a like lead point guard, lead scorer type guard at this point. Uh, and he lacks some shooting consistency. Is a thing that I read on on everybody's pretty much. But uh, but you kind of know. But you if you know what he is coming in, then the weaknesses don't stand out as much. Yeah, I went to look for his. Um... I want to see what his vert was. He was at 36 uh, vertical, 28 standing standing vert um, at the combine. But yeah, it's the, you know, when, when you come to these guards who are, um, I don't want to call him a combo guard, but like when, when you you come to these guards and you say, all right, can you initiate offense? Like, can he, can he be what Bruce Brown was for Denver? Yes. I think that that is right. like his floor. Right. Yeah. kind of um can initiate some can get to the basket but yeah it, it's the inconsistent shot for me it's like he, he's not in um i personally am not like confident in him like initiating an offense of saying like dude go run the show and do an no. iso out and go do your thing but um at least not right anyway. away yeah, yeah at least yeah yeah i agree with you uh let the availability rafael had him mocked at the eighth pick the Wizards, that's like a that's a pretty good pick, I think, for them. Uh, he he'd work for them. Uh, I, I'm I'm fascinated to see him versus Kulabali yeah. for teams. And you know, now you see Kulabali just like getting love with like Utah yes. at nine, or I mean, what, what a Washington do eight, and it's He's like got a top fourteen promise apparently, right? Yeah, it, it, well, you just like look at these like guards there and. You know, once you get past, you know, Amon Thompson, you know, we'll talk about Anthony Black probably, but like, you, there's only a handful of these guards, and I'll, I'm so curious to see who goes over the other, Casey Wallace or Kulabali. Mm. The Ringer has Casey Wallace at ninth, and the Athletic had him at thirteenth. Uh, we talked about ceiling floor. I think we can kind of agree. Another comp is DeAnthony Melton. I think that's another one uh, mm. that, that would be good for him. Uh, and you just see him as that type of role. You see him as the, you know, can can do some lead guard skills, but you really want him as a defender and like he's going to not slow down your offense at all because he's got enough skills to do a bunch of different things. Yeah, I had um I had a quickly in Josh Hart and then my mm. favorite one though that I have that I'm I'm stuck on is Derek White. Um, Interesting. I I like him I think he's closer to Derek White than Marcus Smart. And Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if that makes sense. Which is super valuable and very much needed right. on 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 winning basketball teams. So Yeah. If you so future future role, where would you see him on the Mavericks? Let's say they draft him at 10. Where would you see him on the Mavericks from day 1 and then at what point does he start to like, actually play? What role does he end up at the end of the season or in the future? Yeah, I mean, he comes off the bench. I don't, I don't think he, you know, he plays much with Kyrie and Luca. Um, could be wrong, but that's, you know, you've got you got two guys out there with him and Kyrie that are pretty small, um, smaller, six two, six three, whatever. But yeah, I think he comes off the bench. He plays with Jaden Hardy. I think he'd be a great yeah, compliment awesome. to Hardy. Um, it'd be a smaller, but it'd be like a man. Yeah, I mean, his defense, Jaden Hardy's offense. I think fans would just like drool over that backcourt teammate young you know backcourt duo uh in dallas that get up and run and, and all of that i something that you mentioned you casually mentioned earlier but this is something small too is you got to see like what's up at the back 
you know, yeah. back back stuff just scares the crap out of me. And you see how much you know Michael Porter Jr.'s dealt with it in the league already. But where where is that? Yeah, you know, how's that affect him now? But yeah, that's that's his role. He's the third ball handler. He's the guy who you know is one of the first guys off the bench playing with Jaden Hardy and Tim Hardaway. Yeah, well, Tim probably not gonna be. On I would just there. feel so great about a Mavs backcourt like rotation with Luca, Kyrie, Casey Wallace, and Jaden Hardy. Like it would just be so fun. Like every, any anytime somebody's in, you're feeling good about whoever's in there. The different combinations. Like there's just a bunch of different things that they can do. It would be great. Like the the older guys and the younger guys. Even though Luca's probably <laughs> three or four years older than them, but. You'd feel good about it, especially if the Mavericks had a little bit of time. But for him, they they need they need him to contribute right away. Um, rotation fit, yeah, like you said, he's coming off the bench to start. I think he would absolutely get time for J- under Jason Kidd, though. Some of these guys we talked about, I don't know if they would get time, Derek Lively or others, but I know that Casey Wallace would definitely get time under. If you're taking him Jason at ten, Kidd. he better get time. Well, you'd hope so, but we also hope that yeah. J- that Javale McGee would start, and they they said that Javale McGee would start, and then he didn't, and he was out of the rotation, so. Anything is possible at this point. JaVale came, yeah, anyway. At the end of the day, why should the Mavs take him? Why shouldn't they take him? Yeah, I mean, I think they take him at 10 if, um, you know, for me, those guys, it, the cutoff for me is is at nine. Um, I would clearly take Anthony Black over him. I would take the bigger guys over him. Um, and then if you're sitting there at 10 and you're set, and you're saying, we want to take a guy here at 10, and it's Case and Wallace. It's you know it, it's Grady Dick, Grady Dick. It's some of these other guys Lively. in that rank. Keontae George, Lively, some of those guys. I'm taking Case and Wallace if I'm if I'm taking somebody at that pick, because you always need a point of attack like defender on these point guards, and this would be you would be locking up that guy with with Case and Wallace. He would be your guy who would go out there and, and chase around the Trey Youngs of the world and all the point guards in the league and say, and say, "All right, well we know that we have that f- th- that's fine." Um that's why you take him cuz you always need a Bruce Brown on your team. Absolutely. Uh, to me, you look at him and I would take him over Anthony Black, I think right now because I'm worried about Anthony Black's shot. We were arguing about th- it's a no brainer. I would take Anthony Black so fast over him. I just think I can look at Case and Wallace and say, I know exactly what you are. But with Anthony Black, you're like, all right, I know you can do a lot of things really well. You're really smart. I think I would trust that eventually he would figure it out. But his shot, just day one, I would rather take the Case and Wallace with the point guard skills with the shot than... Mav, Mavs like Anthony Black, right? <laughs> According to some sources, they do. Uh, had high praise for him. I think I would take. I think he, it'll translate quicker, and I think it'll, he could translate better over time. Whereas Anthony Black's floor is is low for me because of his shot. Like it's just hard for players that that have a shot like that that to, oh, see, to I, work. I think he's so good in all the other areas that he could be. I I, I, I like him yeah. a lot. Like I think Anthony Black's floor is like a Sean Livingston, and that's a long time in the league. And Case and Wallace's floor is like a. Bruce, I like them both. I, mean, I don't even want to say and try to pit one against the other because well, I do like. Well, them. that's what you do in the draft. You pick one or the other. Like you literally pick them. I so. know, but I'm <laughs> I'm not trying to like. I, I don't want. I I do like Casey Wallace a lot. I just like Anthony. Tell Black. me, I, tell me the truth. Look look me in the eyes and tell me the truth. Are you picking Anthony Black because he featured you in his docu series about himself? <laughs> no, I've been all about him. <laughs> You're in Casey Wallace's next. Draft yeah, put me, Casey Wallace, put me in your docu series. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The reason why they don't take him, obviously if a trade comes, right? You need somebody to contribute right now. And as much as I think Case and Wallace could contribute, and we've gone through the list of rookies that uh that like made an impact day one in the NBA, or at least made an impact uh in on playoff teams. Herb Jones, Tyler Hero, Scotty Barnes, Landry Shamit, SGA, Keegan Murray, Michael Porter Jr., Trey Murphy, Desmond Bain. Like I could see Case and Wallace being one of those guys because all those guys, pretty much all those guys can shoot. They can, they all a lot of them have size. They can defend uh, for well, the most part. Like you can you can see how he could be, he could make an impact day one and play. It's hard. It's harder for, uh, but it's it's harder for a rookie. And so the Mavericks may want to just trade it and then get somebody that will absolutely play. Yeah, or you want somebody who has the chance to start and play a ton of minutes with Luka and Kyrie. Like if you true, know you're locking true. Kyrie in for a long time. And let's say let's say Hendricks is there, and it's Hendricks versus Case and Wallace. Yeah. Um, 
or let's say live it's lively versus him and they're looking at it and saying all right we want somebody who might not start right now but has the chance to be like a guaranteed starter with both of those guys i just don't see a world that you can pull off Kyrie and case and wallace yeah yeah it would be hard i think case and wallace being able to defend bigger guys is a is a plus for him in that sense which I, there's probably somebody listening to this right now saying all right, Denver just did with Jamal Murray and Bruce Brown for a lot of possessions. It's like, okay. I mean, him and KCP, it's like you're talking about one or two inch difference. Is that like that big of a deal? Size matters. Grady Dick, he's six seven. Like, I mean, he's got the size. I can't do it today. Yeah, I can. I, I get your point though that I can see how Luca Kyrie and Anthony Black would would fare better and and fit better like. As far as you know, the size and defense and that, or Taylor Hendricks or Lively, then with Casey Wallace. Even though if I squint hard enough, I could see. All right, can I talk myself into Luca, Kyrie, and Casey Wallace in the future? Like, yeah. yeah. You'd have to have yeah. a good defensive center, and you'd have to have a really good defensive wing, like an elite defensive wing, an elite gotta, defensive wing. You, yeah, I was gonna say you got to have some size on the perimeter, right? Um, you know, but Luca's but Luca's got size, and we've seen Luca. He he adds to the rebound. So does DeAndre Jordan. Okay, what kind of comparison is this? <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. Let us know what you think about Casey Walls. How happy would you be if the Mavericks drafted him? Scale of zero to five. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow we'll be back. I've got a bunch of guests lined up. Isaac's going to be out, and so I've got a bunch of guests. I've got um, Kevin Gray and Reggie uh, Atatula from the Fan. I got Rafael Barlow. I got Richard oh. Saman. All kinds of draft stuff. We'll have fun this this week, guys. Thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Mavs. Peace out. Boom.